Thanks uh, for uh, having me here today. It's a pleasure to present to you. I work with Ativio, as uh, Nils mentioned. We're a Boston-based uh, company, but we have offices throughout Europe. We're a software company. We work in the space of big data, and that's a term you're get, going to hear a lot about today uh, and something I'm going to present on. Uh, we uh, are working with a lot of companies in how to use data more effectively for marketing. So, what is big data? So this is a term that's come out recently. I mean, we, it's a hyped term. We see it often come up as a, as a, as a term used to describe information that doesn't fit into a traditional data warehouse. So everyone's familiar over the years with very structured data warehouses where everything's very well defined and the information is, is put into very structured formats. Uh, what we're seeing now is an emerging trend of a lot of more information coming out. There's sensor data, there's log files, that what people are doing on the web is being recorded in an unstructured way. We're also seeing emails and content, what customers are actually saying being recorded, and how do you actually store that and put that into a, into a warehouse or a repository to try and get some insight about what your customers are doing and saying and ultimately be able to sell to them more effectively. So just taking it a level deeper, within that world of, of data, we've got two main definitions, sort of structured and unstructured. The structured piece, as I mentioned, it's been around for many years. It fits into a data warehouse. It's very, very... Um, brittle in terms of if you're changing sources underneath, it takes a while to actually build that up. It's very um, you know, well-defined and, and structured, obviously, given the definition. Unstructured, email content, log files, and just to take it a level deeper, the data is what your customers are actually doing, so they're transacting with you, they're recording things, they're viewing things online, they're perhaps sending you information from sensors, like their GPS signals. And then we've got the content piece. And this is what customers are actually saying and telling you. Everyone's familiar with Twitter in the, in the last few years. A lot of customers are, are venting their frustrations or their pleasures on, on Twitter. So how do you actually take that type of information and look at it more closely? So we're going to look at just some of the tools that are used and the differences between that information and why that's important to you uh, to be able to market more effectively. So, we're looking at three main definitions. This is a fairly well um, known sort of categorization of information from Gartner. So, sort of on the, uh, the, the volume side, we've got two different types of information the content, human created, it tends to be very sporadic, not so high volumes. So, all of a sudden, there's a flurry of emails, but tends to be low volume compared to things like log files and sensor data, where you can get many, many measurements, millions of measurements in an hour, in fact. So the volumes are quite different. Uh, we're dealing with a, a lot more speed, obviously, in terms of sensor data. Those measurements can happen multiple times a second or millions of times an hour. Uh, whereas the content side, you know, a Twitter post, it's going to be once a day or per person, at least. So if you're looking at those volumes, they're, they're very different. And then finally, the variety of them. So the way in which sensor information is produced tends to be in very common formats, CSV files, XML, common, well-known industry standard formats. When we're dealing with uh, the, the human-created content, it, it lives everywhere. It's in an email, it's on a Facebook post, it's in a Twitter post. It's in call agent logs when someone calls in. There's also transcripts. A lot of companies record what customers are saying to them on the phone. It's not always for training purposes, as you hear. It's actually being taken in and transcribed and then analyzed. And they're trying to determine whether you're happy or unhappy with their product or service. So how is that information useful and how do you approach those two different fields? And certainly what we see is customers need two different approaches for those two different types of information sets. And what I'm going to focus on is, is the content side. So this is an example of a wrestler, the WW. Sorry? Okay. This is an example of a wrestler 
uh, who um, we've worked with the Wrestling Federation to actually take in all their social media content and analyze what their fans are saying about wrestlers and obviously how they can improve their marketing and promotion to the fans. Now, when a wrestling fan uses the term sick, that can generally mean something quite good. When you're dealing with a restaurant and your customer says something in the context of being sick, it's obviously quite a negative thing. So being able to differentiate between positive and negative statements is something very dependent on an industry and on a customer base. And that requires a technique called machine learning. It's not as simple as just building a list of positive and negative words. You actually have to have algorithms that go and train and listen out to that information. And that's why it's so important to, to perform these techniques using the right technology that can look at that information and actually be trained on, on those data sets. So now we're going to look at an email. And you think of, as I mentioned, sensor data will tell you lots of little things, clicks and so on. But let's just take one email as a comparison from a customer and what valuable information actually sits in a single email. So if we're taking an, an airline customer here, they've written in, they've complained, and uh, here are some relevant data points that you can see that can be automatically pulled out of that email using techniques such as entity extraction. So we can pull out things like the customer's name and email address, automatically match that up to their records. So we know we don't need to manually attach this email to, to a particular individual's records in the systems. We can look at a competitor mention. We can look at which route was flown on and actually how happy or unhappy that customer is and, and what they're talking about, which products they're talking about in that email. So next time that customer calls in, you can actually see that interaction and understand some key phrases out of that last interaction. You can see whether they were happy or unhappy. And, uh, and actually taking that a step further is looking at all of the emails across the customers. So let's say you were pulling in several thousand emails now and you, you can now start to drill down into your customers and what they're saying on a, on a much broader context. And in this example, we can see customers are flying a particular route and they're unhappy. Key phrase analysis is coming out with upgrade seat as a sort of a red alert in terms of being negative about that. So we can see that there's an issue on this route with actually offering enough upgraded seats for our customers. And we can take action there. So that's just an example of content, the value of a single email and the value of several to be able to help better understand customers and uh, market more effectively. So what are we doing there? When we're looking at that information, we're actually running computer processes across it to perform techniques such as entity extraction. This is pulling out the names, locations, and places out of that email and providing it as a, as a category to then filter. We're performing key phrase detection. This is, again, statistical analysis to look at particular terms that are reoccurring across all of those emails. So you saw their upgrade seat was one. Classification, actually determining whether something's positive or negative, understanding whether it's an email or a call transcript. This can again be trained in the system, so it takes a lot of manual effort away. I know there's, there's companies initially who started out when Twitter exploded by having hundreds of people actually analyzing each tweet and being able to understand what the customers were saying. And that still goes on today, but it's not scalable, it's not effective, and it actually is, in some cases, less accurate than actually having a machine look at that information and be able to react to it. So just on the definitions that are specific to an industry, we saw things like upgrade seat, uh, there'll, there'll be other terms that are very specific to a particular business. And this is where we can take in customers' dictionaries, their own definitions, particularly in the pharmaceutical space, financial services. Very specific definitions are, are used. And again, this is taken in to analyze the information and understand it more clearly. So, where does the information live? There's many different examples in many different industries. It varies. 
So in the case of pharmaceuticals, there's a lot of phase trials and studies. There's a lot of reports sent back from the, the users of uh, various drugs who are reporting their, their effects. You can start to analyze that information. You can start to see where your competitors are and where the drugs are in their pipeline. You can start to see who to market to, which doctors might be more um, relevant to market to. The same goes for many different industries. We can get a complete view now of the, the customer interaction. So we're not just focusing on what the customer has done in the past. We can actually see what they're saying and actually look and predict into the future about how to generate more revenue and be more effective in marketing to them. This is an example with the retailer. Here we worked across a variety of uh, information sources. We used both internal information, so this is employee chatter. When uh, employees are setting up on the shop floor each day, they're writing to each other and saying what's working, what isn't. And then we're also taking in Twitter and Facebook information to be able to understand the external noise and the external uh, information from customer feedback. And then the third part is actually joining that up to internal information, so to the product catalog. You know, how can I tell from all of that information actually which product is someone talking about, which campaign are they responding to, and what is the effect on revenue in my business? So this is something we did over the process of three to four weeks. We were able to join this information together and actually present it back in a dashboard. And this is an example here of a dashboard where we're looking at a particular product, we can type in bread. Then we can automatically see which products are, are bread related for this particular business. The sentiment of posts, so whether it's exceedingly positive or negative, we can then drill down in a particular point in time. We might see a, a spike downwards, that people are unhappy all of a sudden with that product. And we can actually understand why. So we can start to see here negative comments, which campaigns were responded to. And there's a key phrase analysis coming out the bottom here. You can see bread dated. So what does that actually mean? By actually drilling into that, we can see here that uh, bread was being left on the shelves and customers were being unhappy. So this is just an example of joining up that external information, internal information in a business, and being able to get a better insight into what customers are saying. And you can then react to it. You can do things such as real-time marketing now based off live events. Uh, that's sort of a, an emerging area. With the type of technologies that are now available, you don't need to take several days to process this information or you don't need to take several months to actually wedge it into a, a data warehouse. You can start to react to this information as it comes in and drive out offers. So that's, uh, that's my presentation, thank you very much, Niels, and we'll um, speak to you later in the, the panel session.